What's going on, gang? I want to say thank you to everyone who has bought a course, bought some training, and thank you to the Nerd Tribe who leave the well-constructed comments. In this video, I'm about to drop some of that strong cocaine. I'm about to let you know what is coming now. As you're seeing the beginning of this video, I've gotten $150,000 worth of business credit from American Express. I got a $46,000 line of credit from Goldman Sachs, and I have $32,000. So virtually $230,000 in business credit within the last two months. And some of that happened today. And I'm gonna tell you what I had to do to get that business credit. Everything that I showed you required me showing bank statements. Now, these are bank statements that have my Stripe account, other banks. So I'm not just, because there, there were people who would tell you that go out and get an age corporation and get a business account and start putting some little deposits in there and start cycling some money through there. Uh, they ain't gonna work, homie. They ain't gonna work. What I need to say, if you have bad credit in the future, it's gonna be very hard to fix that bad credit. Recently, there was a guy here on YouTube called The Credit Game, Mike Rondo. And there was another girl on here who was selling credit. And both of their YouTube channels are gone because these people are being indicted. They are cracking down on credit repair agencies. So that's the first issue. And let's go ahead and talk about the credit privacy number. I literally sat through a three hour webinar, the guy's name is Income Cam, about CPNs and they were talking about stuff that works now, works now. You go out, get an H corporation, you get a CPN, you throw some authorized users on it, you get you a few primaries, you age it. That's kind of sort of working because I, during the three hour, um, three hours live stream, they were talking about there was banks that they were shutting them down. I'm gonna tell you why they're shutting them down. Right now on my Experian credit report is a remark saying when my social security number was issued and where it was issued. So anyone that is doing credit verification through Experian, they're verifying if you have a legitimate government issued social security number that matches up with your age. Because what's happening is a lot of people who are getting these credit privacy numbers, they're getting recycled social security numbers. And mark my words, I suspect within two years that every bank, every institution that will be lending credit or extending credit is going to start verifying your social. And that's gonna kill the CPN game. It's gonna kill it. And wh what I wanna say is, if you have bad credit, you need to work on it. I have a whole money course, because here's the thing, and I'm gonna tell you of a recent experience. One of the people, because I was thinking about starting a credit repair business. Thank God I abandoned that idea. And once someone reached me and they had been in an auto accident and they had spent months in the hospital and all of their credit went bad. And I said, no, no problem. So what we did was we attached their hospital records and we wrote goodwill letters to everyone where her credit went bad. And guess what? Everyone took that bad credit off her credit report. So if you have a truly, 
tragic, life-altering event that you can prove you could get your credit fixed if you submit the right documentation and you write the right letters. So that worst case scenario, that handles that. Why does the average person have bad credit? It is a lack of fundamental money management. Right now, I'm spending money like a crackhead. My rent is paid up until December. You wanna know why? Because I got these new American Express cards and I want to get my bonuses. But guess what? As soon as I get a bill, actually before I even get a bill, I'm gonna pay off those credit cards because I will never carry a balance. And one of the things that I've learned, and like I said, if you have bad credit, right now, you need to be working on fixing it, whatever the situation may be. Now, there are some things that are gonna be problematic. Child support on your credit report is a big problem. Tax liens on your credit report is a big problem. Evictions on your credit report are a big problem. And these things are gonna be extremely hard to remove in the future. Because what is happening? We live in the world of technology. And once the price of social security number verification gets ultra cheap and accessible to all of these lending institutions, that's what they're gonna do. And if you try to get a credit product from a bank, credit union, or one of these financial fintechs, and your social security number gets flagged as being a fraud, guess what they're gonna do to you? They're gonna blacklist you. You will never, ever, never, ever, ever get any credit from that organization, ever, because you tried to defraud them, and they are aware of it. So let's go ahead and have this conversation. Let's say you have bad credit. What should you do? I'm going to give you the steps. Number one, get on top of your money. I cannot say that enough. Get on top of your money. Develop a budget. And I don't care if it's just five bucks a week. Get in the habit of saving money. Get in the habit of living on less money than you make. Regardless, I don't care if you work at a subway and you make sandwiches for a living and you only break home 1600 bucks per month. Guess what? You've got to be able to save a hundred to $200 out of that 1600 and live below your income because bad credit outside of a tragic event or an emergency or illness or something like that, it all comes back down to bad money management just bad money management. And I'm just letting you know what is coming. The credit plug, shout out to the credit plug. He did a video recently on uh, age corporations and he, he told the truth. I, as a business owner, have had to show my tax returns three times to get business credit. Two years in the future, that's going to be the norm. If you want to get, let me tell you, I, I, I bank with Chase and I've asked some questions. Uh, I, on paper, qualify for Chase's $250,000 line of credit, business line of credit. However, because I am outside of 524, if you don't know what 524 is, Chase will not extend you a personal credit card or any personal credit products if you've had five new open accounts in the last 24 months. So this applies for personal and business. So if you're on 524 from the personal side, you're also on 524 from the business side. I've literally opened up 13 new accounts this year. So I am well outside of 524. 
I will go under 524 next December. Next December is when I will be able to walk in the chase and get a, a personal credit card or get their business credit products. And here's, I asked the guy, cause when I was setting up the bank account for my trading company, Mac Daddy Trades, I asked him what did I need? He said, you're gonna need one year tax returns. You're gonna need a b &L statement. You're gonna need a personal net worth statement. Be under 524 and have good credit to get a Chase business line of credit. Just walking through the door. So this is the future. All of you people who are doing like I, I had someone that's like, well, celebrities use these private CPNs. Uh, I don't think so. You want to know why I don't think so? Because a lot of these celebrities, Jamie Foxx real name isn't Jamie Foxx. So if you were trying to go out and get some credit in Jamie Foxx's name and you don't know his real name, because I cannot at the moment think of his real name. So they're already having a level of privacy. And once again, there is no government agency that issues a CPN. There's no one that issues a CPN. There's nowhere you can get a legit CPN except if you go through the witness protection program, that is the only way that you can get a legitimate CPN because what they're going to do, because I have a cousin who works for the DEA and when they bring you in the witness protection program and assign you a new identity, they get you a new social, new credit, all this, they set all of that stuff up. That is the only way that you can get a CPN that's legit, that's going to verify with the Social Security Administration once we get to that level. Because I'm, I'm just letting you know what's coming. I'm just letting you know what's coming. Because I see every day people doing videos about age corporations. I see every day people doing credit privacy videos. CPN videos. I see all of this game. I see all of this sauce. And what's going to happen in two years or less, a lot of people are going to have their credit products revoked. You're going to have, you're going to spend all of this time building your CPN, getting authorized users, throwing trade lines on there, backdating your CPN, and then you're gonna wake up one morning and you're gonna to go to Starbucks and use your credit card and your credit card's gonna be declined. And you're gonna call them up and they're gonna tell you your account is closed. There's a ton of people, because here, here's the thing. The amount of time that it takes to create a rigorous CPN is about 15 months to 24 months. Roughly the same amount of time it would take you to fix your credit. Unless you've got tax liens, that's really, you're, you're kind of screwed with that. You got child support, you got bankruptcies, you have, th those are some really rough issues. R really, really rough. And essentially, you can begin to get credit with these things on your credit report, but you're not gonna get top tier credit. You're not gonna get the best interest rates until that stuff actually ages off your credit report. So if I was a person with bad credit, this is what I would do. Number one, I would put myself on the budget. Number two, I would save money. Number three, I would get myself not one, not two, but three secured credit cards that I can fund up to $5,000. And it doesn't matter because like, let's say, let's say all I had at the moment was $1,000 to put on these secure credit cards. Over time, I would add more and more money until I got to that $5,000 limit. 
I'm going to give you one bank, which if you, and this, this is what you have to do. U.S. Bank will virtually give anyone a secured credit card. There are many banks that will not give you credit. If you got no credit, they will give you a secured credit card. If you have really bad credit, they will not give you a secured credit card. But U.S. Bank is virtually one of the prime banks that still has a secured credit card product that if handled appropriately will convert to a non-secured credit card product. And then uh, someone I helped out with it, he recently, he did what I said, he got not one, not two, but three of them, and his cards graduated, that meant they converted back from a secured credit product to an unsecured credit product, and they sent him his 5,000, well, his $15,000 back. And then he asked for a credit limit increase and they raised all of the credit limits of his, what were formerly secured credit card products. Because he, here's the thing, you want to start out at 5,000 because most of the stuff out there to help you rebuild your credit is garbage. Number one, this is another issue. Capital One will virtually give a credit card to anyone, but if you know anything about the Capital One system, Capital One, if you have, if you come into their system with really bad credit, Capital One is going to bucket you. Meaning that anything that Capital One gives you, as long as you're in that subprime bucket, you're never going to get a decent credit limit. Even once your credit improves because Capital One initially puts you in that bucket. So you literally will have to have these low limit credit cards for five years minimum before Capital One will even think about giving you a decent limit. And this is why I said start off with US Bank as your, because here's the thing, in your credit rebuild, you want your old cards to be something that can convert and something that the credit limit can get to a decent credit limit. And Capital One, if that's all you have, use Capital One, but just know that if you enter the Capital One system with bad credit, you will be bucketed and you will never be able to get anything decent out of them until after five or six years. So this is why I say start off with US Bank. Then another thing you wanna do is go to a credit union. And most credit unions have a pledge loan find out whatever the max is for this loan, save it up, do the loan, and pay them back with their own money. So you've got one, two, three secured credit cards. You got one pledge loan. Now, if your credit is really, really jacked up, I would not advise you to go out and get a car loan to improve your credit. I would advise you to save up and get a point A to point B car. Do not, because what's gonna happen if you go out and get an auto loan while your credit is super jacked up, we're talking 16, 17, 18, 20 something percent interest rate. You would be better off getting a cash car and having to replace it in two years than to pay all of this money for this onerous interest because you have bad credit. And once again, these three credit cards and this one secured loan, pledge loan, is going to improve your credit report 100 to 200 points in two to three years. And that's where you need to start. You need to start because first of all, look at why you have bad credit. If you did not have an injury or hospitalization or some kind of illness, the reason that you have bad credit is because you have poor money management skills. So we need to address that. And what's gonna happen is, with this pledge loan and these secured credit cards, two to three years in the future, you're gonna get 15,000 plus whatever money you put away for the pledge loan. Also, if you have access to Navy Federal, that would be an expedient way for you to improve your credit because Navy Federal will give you a secured credit card and they will unsecure it in a matter of three to six months. And then once you get in with Navy Federal and your internal score goes up, 
you can get a lot of unsecured things. And if you're in the situation where you have to buy a newer car, I would hope that you would try to do this with Navy Federal because you will get a decent interest rate and you would get a better position. Because here's the thing, all of those people who are doing the CPNs and the H corporations, their day of reckoning is coming. And if they had sat down and did it the correct way, the correct way, they would be in a better situation. And this is something else too. I am not going to say names. I'm not going to name names, but I have made some observations of some fellow YouTubers that make me go, hmm, one YouTuber was talking about not paying her employees on time. Um, I am proud to say anyone that has worked for me has gotten paid on time and got paid what they deserved. I've never messed around with payroll. There are many people in the money space that will talk about, there's another YouTuber who has challenged credit. Challenged credit. And he teaches people how to make money. And I, I, I listen to this stuff and I'm just sitting there like, here's my thing. If you are in the position of educating people on how to level up, this is just my opinion. All of your financial life should be straight. You should not have bad credit. Because this is a fellow YouTuber who was talking about not paying her employees also had some credit issues. Here's the thing. If you're making the type of money you claim to be making, bad credit is not a thing. It's not. So that's one of the things that makes me go ahead and give some people the side eye, the side eye, because I see a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense to me because I am financially literate, great credit, great income. I know all things about in the spheres of money and there would be no way I would come here on YouTube and try to talk to you guys if I had bad credit or a lack of income, because here's the thing, and I've helped out people. You know, I have many people who reach out to me via email and they're serious and they pay me and I help them out. Now I had an entrepreneur making good money, 500K a year, but he had bad credit due to his ex-wife and some stuff his mother did. The blueprint I gave you, I was like, go ahead, get these secured credit cards and then find a bank that will, that's a, cause you know, there's this thing like Chase is a relationship bank. Chase is a relationship bank. If you have good credit, many so-called relationship banks are not relationship banks. If you have bad credit, but there are a few credit unions because he found a credit union in his town that he started running a lot of cash for that credit union. The credit union extended him credit cards, extended him a mortgage, while he still had bad credit. So they were truly a relationship bank and these things are not that easy to find because any bank is quote a relationship bank if you have good credit. But if you do not have good credit, most of these banks are not relationship banks because uh, this is one of the things, this is something that I've experienced. I have good credit and I'm gonna explain to you why I have not focused on building business credit and why it's a newfound focus for me. I did not really focus on building credit because like, once again, um, <laughs> the, the, I, I got plenty of credit cards and nothing is on these credit cards. I have no balances. Now, one of the reasons that I did not focus on building credit 
was I was focused on building a cash flowing business. Because here's the thing, there are many, many people here on YouTube that would literally have you believe unless you can get funding, you cannot start a business. That is 100% false. If you have a business that cash flows very well, you can actually get by without credit. I've never had a business that I started with credit. I've never had a business that I started with a credit card. Just never did it. So those people who would have you believing that the only way to start a business is to get funding or 0% interest, they have never started a cash flowing business. Because here's the thing, if your business is cash flowing, that shows you that your business model is working. And there are plenty of people, I'm not the only one that's done this, there are plenty of people, there's a lady on CNBN Make It who started selling stuff on eBay and built a $141 million business without the assistance of business loans or lines of credit. She didn't do that. So what happened to me? If I'm going to teach you guys about business credit, I need to have business credit. Good point. Uh, I got the Wells Fargo secured credit card. I got two of them, $25,000 funded them to the max. And what happened is Wells Fargo canceled my accounts and they got rid of the card because you can no longer get the secure card. And this is what I'm telling you at the moment, us bank is us bank and you can hunt around. There's a few credit unions that offer secure cards that do convert. But what is happening is from a banking standpoint, these banks do not make money from their secure credit card products. And that's why they're disappearing because Wells Fargo used to have a personal secured credit card and a business secured credit card. They got rid of them because they don't make money. So this is why I'm saying at the moment, US Bank and I think First Tech, and you, you gotta hunt around, but you know, first tech, you can get a secured credit card to 100K. I don't know how long they're going to have that. So what you want to do, if you have bad credit, is start working on your bad credit today. You want to start working on it today. Because these so-called shortcuts, I'm telling you, you're going to see in about two years, a lot of these people who are talking about age corporations, who are straight up lying to you. I was watching this, it's like, I got this age corporation, I got $632 of funding, I still got some banks to go to. Um, here's the thing. Because I have so many personal, brand new credit card accounts that I opened, I can't apply for anything else. I have 17 credit inquiries on Experian, I have 15 credit inquiries on TransUnion and I have eight on Equifax. So for the next, from now until next December, I'm not applying for anything that is not a soft pull or business. Because I need to let my stuff garden because I am at a position, because here's the thing, a lot of these accounts got open and I cannot delete the credit inquiries because all these credit inquiries are attached to open accounts. So I can't delete them because that will shut down the new account. So I gotta chill unless I can find like the Goldman Sachs. I knew that was a soft pull and I'm probably gonna go for the GM credit card because it's a soft pull. I'll do that kind of stuff, but anything that's a hard pull or it could show up on my credit report as an active account, I'm not doing that. Cause like I said, I gotta sit, I gotta chill. Fortunately for me, I don't really need credit. I have a cash flow in business so I can get by. It's not um, super important for me. Now for me as an educator, to tell you what I'm talking about, I have to go through the process 
of getting these credit products so I can get accurate, timely, and reliable data points. And the Marcus, the Marcus of line of credit, that's like a $46,000 credit card. That's like, I mean, so going forward, I am going, my goal is, and let me tell you what my goal is. In the next three years, let me say this again, in the next three years, I want to build 1.5 million in business credit. Because I see all this stuff, you know, $25,000 credit card, and this and that. I'm at a level where I'm used to making six figures per month. So the average credit card ain't six figures. It's not. So what I'm gonna do, and it's, it's a personal goal, I wanna challenge myself to see if I can get in the next three years, $1.5 million in business credit. And this is something else I'm getting ready to do. I am not, um, I'm getting ready to run, this is my credit card setup at the moment. It's American Express. So I'm gonna have to put all of my American Express business cards because I have two, two American, Ex actually I have, I have a, yeah, I have two American Express business cards and I have, um, or Topargo card, because that's going to be my setup. Uh, I plan on running as much through, much spend as possible through American Express to get my sign up bonuses. And then I also carry a visa because some places don't take American Express, but typically it's American Express first. And essentially I've just got this American Express business card. I've already spent $12,000. You want to know how I did this? And this is one of the things I have the privilege. I can prepay my rent. So my rent is paid up for October and November already. And I'm probably just going to pay uh, for opt December and just um, go ahead and prepay my rent and go ahead and get my bonuses. And then, cause uh, I have to spend 15,000 for the American express platinum to get my 150 sign up bonuses. And once again, I am not spending money on stuff I don't need, like prepaying my rent, that serves me. That serves me quite well. So I'm not going to worry about rent for this, you know, pay this month in November, and I'm just going to go ahead and pay December and not even worry about it. Because one of the things is there's a strategy. I'm not just going out here and spending money on useless things I don't need. That's just stupid. So, and when I get this new Delta, because I, I got the personal Delta Reserve and I have the American Express Business Reserve, and they gave me like a $75,000 limit. So, I, I have to spend, and one of the reasons I got it is because once I hit my, um, sign on bonus spend limits, I'm literally going to have 300,000 points for the business platinum MR reward points. And then I'm going to have 250,000 sky miles for the Delta cards. And what I'm going to do is because here's this thing, I'm going to travel. I, I got some trips planned and I'm not going to use my points. My points will be I plan on going to Hawaii. You know, I was stationed in Hawaii. I haven't been back since, and I'm gonna go visit Hawaii, and that's what I'm gonna use the points on. Because all of my business expenses, I'm going to go ahead and pay for them because they're tax deductions. I don't wanna use my points for something that's a tax deduction. I don't wanna use that. So going forward, and I'm giving you this message because I see so much stuff and the credit plug will co-sign everything I'm saying. And this is his specialty, business credit and personal credit. This is coming. Next two years, I say you will not be able to get a robust business credit financial product without showing your business bank statements and or tax returns. 
you're not going to be able to get anything decent. You can go around and get maybe a $20,000 line of credit because what I see is they're going to push down the no dock products. These are products that you can get without on stated income. It's just, you tell them how much you make, they give you the product. That stuff's going to get watered down. So if you're a person with bad credit, instead of wasting your time with a CPN or getting these age corporations, because I'm telling you two years from now, a lot of people are going to wake up and they're going to be pissed off because they spent all this time building their CPN, building their age corporation, buying this zombie debt. Oh, you know about zombie debt? What you go out and do is create a collection agency because that gives you the ability to throw information in your credit bureau. So you go out and you buy a bunch of bad debt and then you just start reporting that on your CPN as a, as a closed account. I mean, once again, the level of work that goes into building these synthetic identities. We're looking at 18 months to 24 months. The average person, depending upon how bad their credit is, can fix their credit in that time. Because I'm just here to tell you, as someone who has, with the Divi and the Terpargo, puts me in about, close to 400,000 in business credit. So, and let me go ahead and tell you, most of these FinTech business credit products are not credit cards. And this is one of the reasons that I have the personal American Express Platinum and I have the business American Express Platinum. If I'm going to have a charge card, which, you know, with American Express, they have something pay it where you can kind of extend the payments if you wanted to. But if I'm going to have a charge card, I'm going to have the best charge card on the planet because Divi is a charge card. And this is the thing with Divi. Uh, I actually unhooked, I actually moved money because with Divi, you have to have a linked bank account to your Divi card, right? And I transferred a bunch of money out that account and guess what Divi did to my Divi credit limit? Do, 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 do. Just came down. Opened the account, it was at 40,000. I had a whole bunch of money in there. It went up to 150,000. And then I moved that money out and it went do, 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 do. So a lot of these FinTech products are just the carrot card. It's a charge card. I don't think I'm gonna ever really use it. You wanna know why? I don't really get a lot of rewards from the carrot card. The carrot card, it's a different looking card. But once again, my credit card setup is my business American Express credit products first. And once again, uh, I got the Marcus line, of, the Goldman Sachs line of credit, and I'm probably going to get the GM business credit card. Go ahead and get that. And one of the things that I'm going, like I said, I am not doing anything that requires a hard pull or an open account until December of next year, because I have to let my stuff guard. But once again, man, you can keep playing these CPN games. You can keep playing these age corporation games. Because literally, I sat there for three hours. His name is Income Cam. You can watch the three hours CPN Million Dollar Blueprint. And I saw these things, these guys who was like, you go ahead and, you know, get a mortgage for your CPN. And you do all this stuff. And no one on that live call had any real wealth. No one. And... Once again, these shortcuts are literally going to blow up in these people's faces. It's just a matter of time. If I, knowing what I know, if I had a CPN, I would be worried. 
I would be worried because here's the thing. Let's say you go ahead and get a car on the CPN and the, the lending institution finds out that you sent them a fraudulent uh, CP, uh, fr fraudulent identifier, right? And, but you've been making your payments on time. I don't know what that lender's going to do because it's like, we're getting paid. But typically, I've known people who've tried to use uh, fraud and um, it didn't go well. It didn't go well at all. So here's the thing, man. You got to get yourself straight because these, this sauce and this hack, once again, go to the Credit Plugs channel. He will verify everything that I'm saying. Everything. He even did the video on age corporations and stuff. And once again, go ahead, check out the credit plug because you're going to have to do this stuff correctly and legitimately in the future. Like some of this stuff works. And like during the live stream, it was talking about there were banks they couldn't mess with because these banks are doing social security number verification. And here's the thing. Every application that I have filled out for business credit, they've asked me for my social security number. You want to know why? There's something in the banking industry called, and it's a law put out by Congress. Know your customer. Know your customer. So for all you folks on this CP and oh, the crypto boys. Right now, there's kind of like a little rally. Crypto went up, stock market went up. Wait until what happens after the election. Just wait. So once again, I'm getting ready to do some new training. Uh, it's gonna be about trust. It's gonna be about holding companies and setups and all this other stuff. And if you go ahead and get into the program, it's gonna be in the first comment below. You will get this new training because I need some time to sit down, to put it out because once again, there's a reason I'm getting all this business credit because I want to teach you how to get business credit legitimately. Teach you how to legitimately level up because this is why I actually showed you. I have American Express credit products. I actually showed you the, the Goldman Sachs line of credit. I actually showed you my carrot card because here's the thing. There's a lot of people online who are just saying, you can do it without not even an ounce of proof. So once again, be careful who you listen to, because if you're listening to someone that teaches you how to make money and they have an issue paying their employees and they have bad credit, red flag, that's a red flag. You're listening to someone that teaches you how to make money and credit is an issue for them. Red flag, red flag. Because like I said, I listen to people. I listen to a lot of YouTubers. I listen to every word that they say. And there's a lot of garbage advice being put out on the internets and TikToks. It's just truly garbage. So go ahead, get the program, and I'm gonna teach you how to set up a trust, teach you how to do um, holding companies, I'm going to teach you there, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I've never talked about before that will be in this new training. So go ahead. It'll be in the first comment. Go ahead and get that. And I'm going to school you and teach you how to legitimately level up because you can do it. It's just going to take some time, but you can do it.